So let's get back to the auction. All right. So what we are looking over here. We are looking at the HOA foreclosure, I believe. And it's already $24,000. What I'm going to do right now, 27. Okay, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to try to make a quick, okay, very quick preparation for this one. So I'm going to update the auction, like I told you before. Every time when I want to update the auction, I just update the auction. Now it's going, it's going to update the auction. It's going to remove the cancellation for me. It's going to keep me with a very accurate spreadsheet. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to look at that cell with you right now. I believe in an HOA foreclosure right now. And uh, 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 the first thing that you need to know, actually, when auction is happening, is who is foreclosing. So let's see if we can get to that. 18238207. No, I don't have that because it was removed later. I removed it. Two, three, zero. Okay, because it's going already, so he didn't take it because it's not in the upcoming auction. So this one uh, was just removed from my list, apparently. And you can see that the next one is waiting for me in the first row. So I'm not going to be able to check this property uh, using the Excel spreadsheet, but I can check it manually. I believe it's a HOF foreclosure, but we're going to wait. And... See, actually, I might have this property in my previous spreadsheet. Let me see if I... Okay, I do have this case. Okay, I want to show you. It was on my previous Excel spreadsheet before I updated. And this is the property that they are bidding on right now. And if you want to know information about this property, as I said, I have everything handy over here. Uh, was last sold for 157, 554, and I was closing that recently. So this property was already closed on, and there was a lien. The HOA did not release the lien. Well, this sale already happened according to the MLS. Let's verify it. Yes, indeed, this property was just bought in October of 2019 and they are bidding on this property for no apparent reason yes it's the same property 206d if i click here i can verify it's 206d i can verify the information i can see it was sold and if i click over here i can even see the deed it was sold from these people no from these people to those people Sorry. Yeah, from these people to these people just recently. And probably the previous people are being foreclosed. Yes, previous people are being foreclosed. This property was already sold with the title insurance and everything. Anyone, any anybody who is bidding on that property is making a big mistake. It was already sold. There is no way there is seven thousand dollar owed to the HOA. If there was a proper closing one way to check it out is to actually look at the docket it's another piece of information you can do you can borrow it count you can see the docket itself you can see the docket uh the court the clerk clerks of court docket okay which tells you all the things that are happening The foreclosure and they didn't stop this foreclosure yet you see the association is uh, still foreclosing on that property and that was last year they started this foreclosure and I have a feeling that uh, whoever bought this property this one already paid so so this sale nobody should even bid on that sale okay that's some I don't know why people are even bidding on that one uh, that property is coming for $60,000, but uh, I guess it's not worth it. So let's see why it's not. Nobody's bidding on that. And we look at this. And if I look at um, the MLS. I would 
let's see. Let's try to list it from A9, something like that. And Yeah, somebody's bidding on it. The way I would do a search for a property like that is the first of all, what I do is I try to find out uh, what it's worth and also who is foreclosing, right? If you can see over here, Dodge Bank is foreclosing and over here, uh, there is a HOA foreclosing, okay? So do two different cases. If you buy this position, you only buy the HOA position. If you buy this position here from the bank, you need to make sure the first lender, it's that, it, that Dodge Bank is the first lien position. And I'm gonna talk about position and title search. I'm gonna um, create a video on that as well. And before that, the only thing I wanna uh, do right now is I wanna understand what's the market value for this property that I'm bidding on right now. And one way for me to go and see is just use the reports here, the comps. And I'm saying it's worth, uh, based on square footage, 77, based on the um, comps, 96, and giving you all the comps that were sold. And what I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at um, the square footage is uh, 1160. And I want to compare it to other 1160 over here, like this one that was sold for $88,000. You know, this one that was sold for 87. So to play it safe, I would say $85,000. That's what it's worth. That's for me to move it. That's what it's worth. And I'm still bidding on it. Great. So other, other things I want to do right now is I want to check for liens. I want to see what's the underlying debt uh, on that property. Okay, that I just put $85,000. That's what I think it's worth. Now I want to know how much is owed against that property. So if I go to the property present here and I click, I can click on taxes. First thing I do is I click on taxes and I see that taxes are paid. So that's great. Taxes are paid. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search. Okay, I'm going to search from the warranty deed. Whoever bought that property, I want to search, search the lien against that name. Since two or three. So I'm always going by the warranty deed. And then I'm checking the other parties. So I'm putting that name here. And I'm also going to put liens. <clears throat> I just want to see if there is a big H rail in here. And I see there was one file in 2017, never satisfied. And for $4,000 here. That lien was never satisfied for 2017. And I would assume that uh, that lien is already about $20,000. With attorney fees, or maybe $15,000 at best. So you already have $15,000 in terms of liens and repairs and so you have fifteen thousand dollars in terms of only HOA liens and are usually taking another ten thousand dollars into repairs so that makes it twenty five thousand dollars in terms of expenses that you're gonna have on this property so to make to make a thirty percent profit right I have to be at forty thousand dollar bid if I'm gonna sell it for $85,000. That's that's the bid I need to be at. That's why nobody bid it at the beginning, because that's not a property you can flip. How can you flip a property that you're buying for $62,000, not including dock stamps, not including clerk of court fees, not including evictions if you need to do it, okay? Plus $15,000 HOA lien, okay? That makes it about $80,000 debt plus you have to put another ten thousand dollar into renovations at least so you buy this property at uh, maybe even more expensive than retail okay if i'm gonna look at the last sales 
I want to see 90, I want to see 95. Okay, that's the highest we can get for these properties. High 90, 95, probably very, very, uh, very good condition. But you can also see $69,000 or so recently over here. You can also see that. So making a bid for $63,000 on a property like that, it doesn't make any sense at all. That's a bad bid. You gotta be a 30% equity uh, on the deals that you're bidding on, okay? And a lot of people that are bidding are making a lot of mistakes, and this is one of them. This is one of the mistakes uh, people are doing here that are overpaying the auction. Because so this one is a big no-no for me. Usually the way I market the no-nos is I just put them on a light, light color so they don't bother my eyes. Something like that. And the one that I like, and then I just, I like to, that's the way actually, that's the way I like to do it. I like to, Okay, so now we're gonna go. This property is just overpaying, just overpaying for that property, completely overpaying for that one. 